Good evening and welcome to a new edition of To The Point. The um, Avigdor Lieberman um, has been recently named uh, Israeli's Minister of Defense. Worth noting that um, Lieberman was a former nightclub bouncer. He also was an advocate of a number of policies, including the bombing of Egypt's Aswan Dam, the toppling of the Palestinian Authority. He also was for the introduction of the death penalty for uh, terrorism and the transfer of Israeli Arabs into uh, the Palestinian territories. Uh, a move which is really met with a lot of criticism, not just in our region, the Arab region, but also within Israel itself. Um, a number of um, um, political analysts and writers are saying that this is basically a face of the mask of Israeli policies. Some are saying that this will be a destruction to the Palestinian peace process. Uh, some are saying that uh, actually the Jewish uh, voice for peace is quite alarmed saying that uh, most uh, of the right wing, uh, most of this government is a right wing government which is um, unprecedented in Israel's history. Uh, Gideon Levy, who is a journalist in Haaretz, uh, said that the move is extremely dangerous, saying that terrorists will burn like they've never burned before. Uh, and adding that for the first time Israel will be facing uh, clear fascism. Uh, this evening to shed light on this issue which is met with quite a lot of criticism as we were saying and worth noting the timing of that is right after Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi proposed a peace initiative whereby the Palestinians and Israelis can uh, move uh, along the peace process and we can go into a two-state solution. With us this evening is His Excellency Ambassador uh, Mohammed Anis Salim, who is a member of the Egyptian Council for Foreign Affairs. A pleasure to have you with us. Mm -hmm. With us also this evening is Dr. Musa Shahata, who is an author, political analyst, and former president of the Arab American Congress. A pleasure to have you with us. Um, maybe I'll start with the Palestinian point of view. Um, how do you feel about this move? Are we misreading? Um, Lieberman's CV, or is there hope that maybe an extreme um, rightist can move things right? I mean, uh, one uh, does not need to go into deep analysis to come to the conclusion that Edward Lieberman is, is, a, is an extremist. Hmm. Uh, one of the things that you mentioned about uh, his objectives is to come up with what is called the Jewish state that is devoid of the presence of the Palestinians, I'm talking about inside the 1948. Uh, he, saw, he sees actually in his mind uh, uh, a demographic bomb that might explode very soon in the future because they are worried about the, the rate of increase of the Palestinians within Israel uh, somehow does not live up to the hopes of the extremists who wants to reduce them down. So much so that even, I remember TV Revenue was saying that the Palestinian in Israel will never feel his identity in Israel. And that's why, again, they're proposing that he has to leave. So, Avigdor Lieberman, uh, in a way, uh, he is uh, uh, initiating practically or polarizing the, the, even the Arabs uh, about there may be two different views. Shall we proceed with what is called the peace process or shall we resort to other ideas? Uh, let us not forget, uh, if we want to talk further, that the, the peace process has come to a complete, not to a complete halt only, it has actually brought negative results every time a peace process takes place. I worry every time I hear about a peace process because the minute it's finished, you're talking about, they're talking about expansion into the next... Uh, then why would Netanyahu do this? I think he's playing a game. He's a liar. He said many times that he's talking about two states. And if you look at the map or in Palestine, you don't see geog geographically the possibility of two states. What do you see? You see on one side uh, Israel, with its expansionism, 
and you see the settlements everywhere, and what you see is pockets of Palestinian presence that are connected with roads that are controlled by the Israeli military. So what are they talking about? Therefore, it is not surprising that Mr. Netanyahu criticized Mr. Uh, Francois Holland, President of uh, France, with his, for his initiative, not because he even read the agenda. There is no agenda. Mm. But it is expected from a president of a respected country like France is to demand what is called the interna implementation of uh, what's called international legality in order for them to come to what is called a two-state solution. Now, in my opinion, there is no way where you can come up with a state, we call it a viable Palestinian state, in the remnants of what's left of the Palestinian presence. Mm -hmm. Therefore, having the development presence, what should it do? I am of those who always said it will be a waste of time to continue negotiations. Time after time, we're talking about from Oslo, which was, I can't even call it an accord, even though they call it the Oslo Accords, but actually it was empty. There was nothing. It was only a ceasefire. All the major issues were postponed to what is called the final uh, settlement a meeting, a negotiation for the final solution, which means Jerusalem, the refugees, the, uh, the, the 1967 borders, and the settlements will be left to be resolved, to be solved later. Which I think, of course, that implies there was a big strategic mistake on the part of the Palestinians. They should have demanded, at least, if you mean what you say with these so-called four items, that they should have uh, put a pressure on the Israelis to sign that uh, on the date of signing this agreement, all settlements will be at least frozen or something, so that we give hope for the future. But, uh, and I saw on the other hand, a secret uh, a video from uh, Mr. Netanyahu, where he said, my purpose has been to empty also from the, the so-called uh, expected accords, and I have succeeded. That's what he's saying right now. Mm. And at the same time, every time you continue with the process of negotiations, the result has been totally nil. I cannot forget, for instance, a special, I'm not talking about the White River and the uh, David, uh, uh, the Camp David the Agreement, or Sharm el-Sheikh, or others. But what stuck in my mind, actually, aside from the so-called roadmap, it stuck in my mind what's called Annapolis. The Annapolis meeting with uh, President uh, Mahmoud uh, 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 Abu Mazin was uh, present. It was sponsored by the United States uh, with the presence of the Israelis, and the United States have somehow used a little bit of pressure, which is surprising to me, because usually if they apply pressure, they apply pressure on the Palestinians, not the Israelis. But they applied pressure and they all signed some kind of semi-agreement whereby Olmert himself, before Netanyahu, signed that he will not, uh, he will liquidate the settlement activities from now on. Yeah. In less than 10 days from his return, I'm talking about 10 days, a bid for 1,500 units were again uh, launched by Mr. Olmert uh, in uh, East Jerusalem. So what are they talking about? We're talking about all negotiations, not only will bring us to zero, but below zero. And it's time for a new thinking, in my opinion, which I will come to this in the session, I hope, and we have other questions. Mm -hmm. uh, Your Excellency. The naming of Lieberman as the, the Minister of Defense, how do you see this move? And maybe I'd like to tie this to what President Sisi had proposed a few days earlier to the appointment. I was going to say that if you start with uh, the appointment of Lieberman, you start at the tail of the story. You need to really start at the, at the beginning of the story. Okay. And the, the story starts with the way you analyze the regional picture as it stands today. Mm -hmm you see a region that is rife with conflicts that have taken the light away from the Palestinian conflict. You see a, an American government that has washed its hands from peace efforts. You see an impasse in the intra-Palestinian relationship. Mm. 
And there is an absence of, of, of any real interest in pushing for a, a settlement. Now, mm. what do you do with, the, with that picture? We're talking about a, a problem that has been there for a very long time. If you just take the, the, the last bracket of time, since 67, we're talking about 50 years of occupation. Yes. 50 years, people have been born and died and went to schools and immigrated and, uh, and the world has changed. And while this is happening, people, the international community is saying, why is it that so many conflicts around the world have been resolved? Why is it that this one is, is, uh, is uh, so difficult? What more can we do to help? Can we do anything or shall we just forget it? Is it true that the other conflicts, the Arabs are more interested in the other conflicts in Yemen, in Syria, in Libya? Have they forgotten about the Palestinian cause? So, so you come to an, 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 an issue which is an, an old one. There hasn't been much innovative thinking on it. And it is very fair. I share the, uh, the, uh, the frustration and the, 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 ne the, the negative attitude we, we, we must feel towards all of this. But in the end, we have to say, now, can the situation get worse? What do we have here? We have a situation that is, has a potential for exploding because of the situation in Jerusalem, because of the situation in Gaza, because of the frustrations of the lack of settlement. We have a lack of, of peace efforts, even in the areas where there have been some initiatives on the economic and humanitarian front. Reconstructing Gaza, for example, after the last several attacks by Israel. When we say that there was a, a press, a, a, big, a big donor conference here, uh, hosted by Egypt in two, 2014, mm -hmm. with a, an appeal of 3.5, actually with pledges, more than an appeal, of pledges for three and a half billion dollars, only just over about 30, 35 percent of this fulfilled. So even in the areas of humanitarian action, we're not seeing a lot of energy. Mm. Now, this has a spillover effect, not only in the Palestinian-Israeli context, but also on all neighborhood. Mm. Because the tensions between Israel and Hezbollah, that war has never stopped, by the way. The, the, the impact on the situation, Egypt's situation as well, including some of the things that are important for Egypt, mm. economic development, investment, tourism, they cannot be divorced from finding a, a new Middle East that is more peaceful, that respects rights, that gives some hope. Mm -hmm. So in, in, in this spirit, I think the Egyptian president was speaking really on two tracks. Mm -hmm. One track is the intra-Palestinian relationship and the need really to re-energize the effort to reach a, con a conciliation between Fatah and Hamas. Yes and feeling that this is hindering the whole process of strengthening the Palestinian hand and also it al allows uh, uh, an excuse uh, on the side of extremists to say there is no Palestinian party that we, we, we can negotiate with. And, and this is not a, a simple conflict, by the way. It's a, it's a deep conflict and it needs to be tackled very seriously. Isn't there always an excuse? I mean, um, even before Hamas was created, uh, the Israelis whole always had an excuse as to why they should not be negotiating with the Palestinians. Huh? Definitely. Definitely. Even if they may mend their differences, Definitely. there will always be something that would... Actually, them. on yeah. His Excellency's point, it's exactly. Uh, at the beginning, when Hamas and Fatah were okay in one government, the criticism by Netanyahu and all the four, how can we negotiate with the government half of which are terrorists? Now, when they've been separated and they took over in Gaza, now they say, why, how can we negotiate with the government, Let us separate. which is half a government okay. of representing the Palestinians? Books so, have been written. Excuses is not a problem. Yeah, books have been written on the mismanagement of the conflict yeah. by both sides. Mm. You can go into a lot of details and a lot of footnotes on where each side has made tactical mistakes. Mm. But in the end, you need to come to grips with the fact that there is a serious conflict inside the Palestinian lines, and this has to be resolved. So that's one part of what uh, President C.U. was saying. The other part was really trying to link his ideas on bringing together the Palestinian side and the Israeli side with another, uh, a number of other efforts that are ongoing. Mm. One of them is the French initiative, 
the initiative to convene a large international conference on two stages, really looking again at the mechanisms that have been developed to manage the Syrian conflict, Vienna 1, and Vienna 2, and the, and the support group for Syria and so on. All these mechanisms created some possibility of movement when, when at the time really in Syria when you know, there was very little hope of, of any agreement between mm -hmm. uh, particularly Washington and Moscow. Uh, so, so that's one thing, that there is a French initiative, and the French initiative was facing problems. Mm -hmm. Now at the same time the quartet is coming to a point when it's presenting its, uh, its report, probably its final report, should come out tomorrow, by the way. That's, mm. I haven't heard that there has been a delay, but... Uh, and the report is really designed around a central idea, again, that has been debated for some time. And the idea is that yeah, over these 50 years, there have been so many initiatives, so many resolutions, so many steps explaining what peace would look like, yes. that in the end you don't have one single document that has the backing of uh, the international community to capture the parameters of this settlement. And that, in a way, the, the, his, the, 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 the whole cause uh, will be lost in, 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 as time passes by. So he was really looking at a way, given the Israeli objections to the French initiative, a way to maintain the momentum, to bring in a mechanism to supplement the French uh, initiative, to supplement the fact that in the United States you have a president who is a lame duck who is going to do very little on this issue over the next uh, six months or so. And in the end, you, you must say at a different level of analysis, is all of this useful or not? Are there some deeper structural reasons that perhaps will lead us to say it may not work? Mm. That's a possibility. Mm. On the other hand, should we not try to bring peace to this part of the world? Should we resign to, to this, to, to, uh, to feeling frustrated and, uh, and, uh, 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 and, and to failure? Or should we try? Or should we also st change the strategy and perhaps think of something more revolutionary like a, a unitary state, a single state solution? Uh, something like the South African model. And that, re that would require a huge shift in Palestinian thinking and Palestinian way of work and also an Arab way of work. So yeah. I, I don't think that we are at the end of the road, but I think that uh, there are possibilities here that need to be explored. There is a need to push for a, 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 a resumption of the peace process because uh, without the peace process, you only have a rise of a, a, a mechanism that can lead, lead to a deterioration of the situation. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to get you to comment, if you have any comments, and then maybe I have um, a few just as, questions. Just comment that uh, uh, the problem that was in it's 68 years old, if we want to go from 1948. Up to sure, yes. Mm. Well, I can go um, from the 19th century. Uh, you want? But we're talking about from the, the almost the declaration yeah. of Israel state onward. Yes. The expulsion of the refugees at the time, uh, the uprooting and the, the devastations and the war. I think it's been 68 years. Uh, of frustrating years that sure. you can uh, echo that in all the camps, whether in Lebanon, Jordan, or many other areas around the Middle East, including even uh, Syria. Mm. Uh, what uh, His Excellency talked about, actually, somehow uh, uh, it, is, it is a very uh, logical conclusion to the very miserable status quo. I mean, frustration and then what? You see, First we have to ask, why would Netanyahu reject the uh, French uh, initiative before he even read the agenda? Mm. Before he even found out what they're going to be talking about? Uh, even though the French move was in a way trying to get away from the, what is called the American uh, sponsorship, mm. and let's not forget that the American sponsorship of the so-called peace process so far has been totally negative. 
because they are simply supporting Israel right or wrong. As simple as that, supporting Israel right or wrong. At the time they disagree, um, money is sent again, military is sent again, and so on and so forth. Yeah. We have a very unique situation. Many people say, what is, why Palestine, from all the problems, as His Excellency mentioned, Palestine is not only colonization. We have a very unique situation in history whereby people were uprooted and they were replaced with incoming people from all over. Mm. Uh, if I remember the history right, in 1915, uh, there were 300,000 Jews that has amassed from all over Europe and Eastern Europe especially, including uh, Russia, waiting for the declaration of Israel to state in order for them to uh, go to Israel. We cannot forget the historical blunders of the British under the British mandate where they opened the borders for the, the Jews to come in because we also have to, everybody has to understand that the partition plan could not be implemented on the ground. Partition plan, you could do it on the map. Because if you say this is Israel, which is almost the coastal area, the question is, where are you going to bring the Jews from all over the world if all the, the land, and almost 90% of it, was owned by the Israeli Palestinians? Where are you going to put them? So the expulsion of the Palestinians was as a necessity to achieve what's called Zionist objectives. There's no question about that. However, they somehow predicated that uh, the Arabs in general will reject what is called the partition plan and therefore prepare yourself for the war so that we do the expulsion. And that's why for this reason, we, uh, many should not be surprised when we realize Israel took almost 22% more than was allotted to them by the United Nations because they want to make room for it. But they have now a, a notion called we have to have a permanent Israel. I don't know. If the complications, is it because of uh, international uh, legalities or etc. I think the problem could be solved in 24 hours if tomorrow Mr. Netanyahu and his group and his other group says, okay, we're ready to implement the United Nations uh, legalities, which is the right of the refugees as of like uh, resolution 194, 1948 and implement the right of the Palestinians to return and then find a solution for this. I'm not talking about necessarily return into Israel properly. There are ways, but as Moshe Dayan said, and it is actually, he is a, a, the master, or the, shall we say, Netanyahu was a student when he said that uh, we know it is land and peace formula. In other words, we can get peace easily if we get back the land. We don't want to get back the land, therefore, there will be no peace. Mm. And that should bring us to some of the short messages that you are giving right now, which is, what else is there to do? In my opinion, one should not discount the possibility of armed struggle, which has been sanctioned by the United Nations. It is a hopeless case. If you're talking about people with honor and dignity, and people who believe in what is right, it would be easy to continue on what is called the peaceful negotiations. But when you know that these people are telling lies, I'm talking about the leadership of the extremists in Israel, there's no use to negotiate without any, uh, some kind of uh, parallel activities like armed struggle. Otherwise, but don't they use armed struggle as an excuse so that they don't sit to the negotiating table? Who are you talking about, the Israelis? The Israelis. No, the Israelis, they will, uh, uh, use excuses even if all the Palestinians... What about public opinion home? at large? If you resort to armed struggle, and I'm not saying I'm not for or against it, I'm just saying that in, in something like the United Nations, which rejected it, for example, and would you not get... No, it was uh, not exactly rejected. Actually, it's sanctioned. It. There are two resolutions allowing the people under occupation, especially talking about the Palestinians, they have the right to, res to resist occupation, including armed struggle. It's mentioned by resolutions. Mm. But that is not what I'm advocating right now. What I'm, no, saying I'm saying wouldn't the international leadership stand against the Palestinian question? I mean, wouldn't this further drive the Palestinian question away from the negotiating table? 
what is what drove the Palestinians away from the negotiating table is the uh, adamant uh, colonialist uh, greedy position of the Israelis by not relinquishing some of the lands. Mm. Now we're talking about people were talking about two states to me it's it's it's, it's almost impossible. Mm. Impossible to form a state from pockets of Palestinian presence surrounded by the Israelis everywhere, connected by roads that are controlled by the Israelis. How are you going to have a viable Palestinian state? Especially when they predict for the future they are not going to go back. And actually they're talking about getting even more to more of that. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I say the choice is not very uh, comfortable, not even for the Palestinians, because they're, they're facing a very formidable force, yes. But nobody ever said that freedom comes free of charge. It's going to be difficult, but it's the only way. Because the Israeli, when he sits with you, and he knows that when you reject all the offers set by the Palestinians, and that the Palestinians, there's nothing he can do, he will continue mm. with his position. Therefore, the possibilities, number one, of resistance should be there, implementing should go parallel with political uh, uh, adventures. Mm. Yet, a very good idea that I heard from the uh, ambassador, which I actually reiterated this in the previous... You said it before, and I can so you, yes. you remember that. I said, I don't advocate the two-state solution anymore, no. because it's you, not You mentioned feasible. this, actually. It's not feasible. I wrote articles about it, so many mm. pieces. Mm. It is not feasible. It, 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 and therefore, to have what is called a one-state solution from the river Jordan to the Mediterranean is the only way to come up with what is called uh, a democratic uh, a state uh, for all people, Muslims, Christians. It, 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 it's easier to say this here, but uh, let me play the devil's advocate here. And you always did. Yes. <laughs> And let me take the place of a Palestinian a mother or a wife or a father who lost their son in uh, this uh, uh, occupation, so to speak, or who lost their homes. Can we say that we can reach this one-state solution, which you had mentioned, uh, I know, a few uh, years ago, actually. Yes. And Your Excellency, you just uh, uh, sort of reminded us of this again. Can we have a one-state solution taking into account that can we coexist the Palestinian people with the Israeli people? In other words, Egypt and Israel have a peace process. But in reality, it's a quite a cold peace process. And so long as we have the events in this region, it will not be anything but this cold peace process. Now, can we actually say the Palestinian and Israeli people can coexist? After all the bad blood, Look, I mean, definitely they can. Look, when you talk about know, uh, when no, you talk no, about the historical you. phenomena of reconciliation, you have to start somewhere. Mm. I want to get back to the issue of a uh, of a uh, mm. because now we talk we're talking about two alternatives to the peace process. Mm. So may, I, may I interject just uh, one point? You say, can they? But you have to say, what if they can't? What's the alternative? The alternative is a miserable status quo with Palestinians remaining in the camps all their lives, uh, trying to also to get back. I that don't know. I'm, I'm, ask, I'm wondering if I was a mother of someone that was killed, can I, or someone, uh, uh, can I just stand by and see someone living in my home and then Why coexist? <laughs> Look, uh, the status quo is terrible. Where you are now is terrible, and it's not only terrible. It's catastrophic. It has been getting worse for the last, not only 68 years, for the last 100 and something years. It's mm. been getting worse systematically. Mm. And part of this story, we don't have enough time for it tonight, part of the story is the mismanagement by the Arabs of this conflict. There has been a, a, a whole series of mistakes only made this along the way. Now, <laughs> uh, if you talk about uh, uh, an objective, you have to think of something that has some sense of hope and idealism, and part of that is coexistence. Mm. And it, you, you will have to come to a, a, a system that will allow people to have room to express their identities, to express their way of thinking, mm. to live in peace without being subjected to this daily humiliation. Mm. Now, the problem is that the formulas we are proposing 
are not accepted to the other side. And the other side the is, Israeli side. is amongst the most powerful military states in the world. Mm. So when you make an assessment of where you put your foot, you need to take into consideration that it will take two to establish peace. Yeah. And you, will, you, are, you are not in a position, the Arab world is not in a position today to even put pressure, let alone lose, use military pressure. There's no neighboring country that is willing to play the role of China vis-a-vis -vis Vietnam, or the Russians vis-a-vis -vis Cuba, all of these issues of countries which have had the support of a major po power mm. in their struggles for uh, independence. You don't have this. So the sooner we come to deal with reality, the better. The, and the reality is that the daily life of Palestinians under occupation is terrible and getting worse. The sooner we can stop this deterioration, the better. The sooner we can create mechanisms towards peace, the better. Mm. The sooner we can arrest the extremism, including this brings me back to your Lieberman point. Mm. Israel has always had coalition governments. Mm. Uh, and the fact that Lieberman is in the government today, he can easily be out of the government after tomorrow. Okay. So you need to look at your strategic objectives. Uh, can you engage Israel in a peace process that creates some constraints on what's happening now, opens venues for a solution, opens venues for changes in the positions of international powers? For example, when we talk about the United States, it's true that we have a, a president that wants to wash his hands from the Middle East, but it's also true that they have been for, for coming forward in their position on some issues, including the issue of the settlements. And, uh, and we're, we're looking forward to have this reflected in the, in the quartet report, whether it comes out tomorrow or, or uh, but, but next What would it do as far as applying any form of pressure on Israel? I mean, it has reached a stage where it's a, a law on itself. I mean, it doesn't respect any international opinion or any international advice to, towards anything. What, what pressure are we talking about? The that, that, that's what I'm saying. What, what, I mean, even if the Quartet issue a report not in favor of what Israel is doing. No, we're talking about the American position specifically. Yeah, American, yeah I understand. Never, we're talking about the American even position, if the American whether, position... Whether that can develop, whether it can... Uh, in the end, the Americans have a key role in the search for peace. Part of the story of what uh, President Sisi was saying was that you have a model in what has happened between Egypt and Israel. Mm. And that there is a, a linkage between what has happened between Egypt and Israel and what's called uh, uh, a warm peace. That uh, the relations need to improve. They cannot stay where they are now. Well, there is practical co cooperation on certain issues, but there is, as you said, a, a cold relationship. Mm -hmm. And that some of this is related to the fact that the Palestinian issue is in the, in the deep freezer. Can it come, can we bring it out? Can we create some movement? I would say, you know, there were all these people who were skeptical about possibilities of peace with Israel. And we will stay that way. But you need to try and you need to keep there, Do you see in the Israeli government a keenness to find the solution? Because maybe this should be the question. In other words, when we did the peace, when Egypt and Israel signed the peace deal, we had before us a partner that was looking forward to a solution. Hence, we reached the Camp David Agreement. It wasn't that simple, by the way. I understand. You had, and you had Begin, who is, uh, who is one of the most extreme Extremist, I understand. I understand this. body politic. And you, have, you had a lot of uh, uh, failures and breakdowns in the process. I understand this but perfectly. you created a dynamic, you, Egypt, created a dynamic that made it impossible for the United States not to take a position and it made imp it impossible for the Israelis not to cooperate. But at the time, you did not have the strength of a Zionist lobby in the United States which you have today. At the same time, when it comes to the situation on Palestinian territories, they're all over Palestine. I would take issue with you on that. Meaning? Meaning that it's not true that there has always been a strong Zionist lobby in the United States. I would say that if you look at things like J Street and the uh, divestment initiative, 
I would say that Israel today is having, uh, having it has a very bad press in the United States. Mm. It has, amongst the Jewish community in the United States, it has a lot of people who are against Israeli occupation. Mm. Uh, you have a lot of dynamics. You have American universities. But why is it not reflected in American policy? Divesting from, from, uh, from American policy is, is, is a reflection of realistic factors. Power, it's a power game. Mm. There are other issues. You know, you have, you have a plethora of conflicts in the region that have distracted people completely from, from the uh, Arab-Israeli conflict. I, I, I take uh, uh, and, 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 exception to and, that. Uh, and I want to remind you also here that we have come very close to solving some of the issues, but somehow this last push was, was missing. For example, the issue of the Golan Heights. We were very close to solving it. We, we, we never made it. The, the last few steps were, were, uh, were frustrating. So I would say that you have to be on the offensive, in the peace process. You have to come with new ideas. You have to be engaging. I am not so optimistic on uh, you know, the talking now about armed resistance. I think this is something that belongs to the 50s. It's too late now to talk about this. It's not realistic. And you need to keep your eye also on the situation of the real people under occupation. I always say that the people under occupation are the ones who are suffering the most. They're the ones that are paying the price. They're paying the price. But uh, I, I take, uh, I debate His Excellency's uh, view on this because uh, what is the conclusion? The conclusion we should keep trying negotiating. I say it has failed, or at least. I wouldn't say it has totally failed and it's the end of the line, but let's put a line that goes parallel with it. When you talk, uh, Your uh, uh, Excellency, about uh, a strong army, granted, so what? Don't forget, guerrilla warfare, armed struggle, resistance in general, they're created because your opponent is very strong. This is a known fact. Hit and run means you cannot, you're not facing it with an army. There is no army. Uh, what did Batista do and what did even Castro uh, uh, did after that? The idea of guerrilla warfare, nobody can stop. Don't forget the experiment in, in Vietnam. The Viet Congs, they were my, a minority yet. With the superpower, the United States was supporting Hanoi and, and the South, yet they lost. Why? because there was resistance. You see, you cannot beat me again and tell me uh, if, if, if everything fails. Uh, you see, what, what are you going to say? We have not used all our options. At the time, uh, at the time, the United States was meeting with the Viet Congs on the peace process. Uh, the, the war was in full house and the Americans realized that if they continue they're going to have more trouble so might as well come to a final and they did and they created what is called the peace in Vietnam mm. not because two million or less uh, Vietnamese, Viet Cong were able to defeat could defeat the they could not to be honest with you but they used what is called the guerrilla the Ho Chi Minh guerrilla warfare that really uh, dragged the United States into the mud that's one thing. This history, we have been through this in the 19th. And these arguments, we, we finished these arguments in the 50s and 60s. That no, no, in, the Arab world, in the Arab world, you don't have a China that will back the Palestinians. Let me, let me you don't have a power that will back the Palestinians. That's number, me, number two, you have... You I have, have not given the this. time to explain this particular point. I'm against what is called classical warfare. I'm against Arab countries participating in any war in the future. Because, as you said, you're talking about a tough, uh, very uh, uh, tough uh, enemy, and I don't want anybody to be hurt because of that. This is the Palestinians. The Palestinians should continue with their resistance without, they, they, they can get the support, moral or financial, etc., support from the Arab countries, but no Arab governments 
should participate in a war against Israel. In my opinion. No, but they will not support. If they don't have support, that means there is no possibility no, of the military what, option. How come they got the support before? Mm -hmm. Because there were there were parties that were backing them and and, and receiving the no, 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 no. military strikes from Israel. I think you have okay. to study a little bit about these movements. Let me, because we're running out of time, and maybe so I'll be So they were running out of time. See, time flies when you're having fun. Yes. Uh, maybe one of the things that I should have asked at the beginning, but after we proceeded with our discussion, I'll go back to this, and that is, I still find it quite mind-boggling, the choice and the timing, because around a month ago, and I'm, I'm quoting here Jewish press, not our press or our media. Israeli press? Yes, uh, that uh, uh, Netanyahu had not so very uh, uh, promising uh, point of view with regards to Lieberman. He said that he is uh, a lazy amateur, and I'm uh, quoting here, he said he's a lazy amateur and a pretty prattler who is not fit to be a military analyst yet. Leave these, uh, leave these personal things on the side because you're... But if this Israeli, is his opinion, Israeli, then why Israeli, politics, him? Israeli politics are very different from politics in, in Egypt and very different from politics in other countries. It's very rough. It's very uh, pointed. What pushed him to and, appoint him? And and it's it's he has a good he has supporters. He has the extremist supporters. He needs he needs to. But I'm asking you. Let, let me just finish, please. Hmm. Uh, he needs to uh, strengthen his position in the Knesset. This is again, it's a, a a kind of political system that depends on coalition governments, and you need to have at least 61 seats in the Knesset to pass any legislation, otherwise you can't function. Mm. So uh, uh, Netanyahu, who is a, 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 a very tough politician, a pragmatist, uh, is searching for uh, allies to help him with the majority in the parliament, and at the same time is playing a game that is a very tough game that involves a number of parties, including the Israeli military. He was not happy with the way the uh, previous Minister of Defense was handling the dissenting voice inside the Israeli military that were criticizing the policies of the government. He wanted to have a, a more tough version. He couldn't agree with uh, Labour on joining the cabinet. Labour asked for certain conditions and asked for these conditions to be in writing. Mm. He refused to give this promise. So he doesn't want to keep uh, to tie his hands down, including on the negotiations on the peace process. There were several, several issues where they asked him to commit in writing to certain positions. They, they, uh, he, he refused this, and he went with Lieberman. By the way, there are still a number of cabinet posts that are open for further, a further expansion in the coalition. And as I said before, you can still s foresee the possibility of another fallout with Lieberman. You must also notice that Lieberman was not appointed as Minister of Foreign Affairs because Lieberman, of course, created a lot of problems when he was previously Minister of Foreign Affairs. But it's not related to, to, to the major issue we're talking about. I'm talking about right now, we're talking about something very important. Are you going to, can you sit here and tell me, proceed with negotiations and you will reach the fair objective? Nobody can tell me that. But you cannot also tell me that you being frustrated, being ruled, uh, being controlled by, by uh, such a Zionist school occupation, administrative detention, thousands of Palestinians are simply picked up from the streets, put in jail, no judicial process. This is tyranny I have never heard in history except this. You don't think the choice of a government will affect Israeli policy? Is no way, that? no. I can't. Come? They, 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 they did not, and it will not. Therefore, the Israelis have to realize that if they continue with, the, with further expansion, that the, they will, don't forget, it was Ben Gurion, when they uh, announced in 1948, that he said, uh, in a generation or two, the Palestinians will forget about Palestine. They did not, they never will, and the next generation will continue. The fact still remains that if I continue with the road, and I could come to a total dead end with them, I have to use another alternative. It's logical. Uh, and before we use the Intifada, do you think the Intifada reached 
some tangible steps? Because well, there was no, Intifada no, 1 no, and no. Intifada 2. The Intifada to me is some kind of a public revolt, but it should be developed, should have been developed, and I do blame the leadership there, should have been developed into becoming a formidable resistance. I don't think the Israelis or anybody can really stop resistance of people who are very, very oppressed. They cannot. They cannot stop that. It's okay. history. Do you continue. think the Palestinian people want this right now? No, the Palestinian people don't want it. Don't want any of the violence whatsoever. But the fact remains, we have no choice. Well, this is not uh, a, a road, uh, asphalted road. You can simply drive with your car and get to the objective. We have no choice because Israel greed has made it almost impossible for the Palestinians to to give a chance for what's called peaceful solution. Every time they negotiate... Why can isn't Hamas resisting? Can you explain? Wasn't this the role of Hamas initially? And that's why Israel refused Hamas, to deal with Hamas a, a because it was the terrorist wing? question about way? Hamas. Hmm? Is Hamas working for what is called the liberation of Palestine? Or is it talking about the caliphate being who has been the uh, wing, the military wing of the Brotherhood? I don't know. But I know one thing for sure. There are thousands and millions of Palestinians who are very anxious to get back and live like human beings, belong to a country of their own, and if they have to die for it, they will. Therefore, we cannot discount resistance, and one should come to the conclusion, if there was a hope in these negotiations, believe me, the, you will see the Palestinians celebrating. What hope is there in negotiating? What hope is there even? What, why do you think again? So, so basically you're saying the promise has failed. Not only has failed, uh, I, I'll give you one simple, simple proof. Netanyahu rejected uh, Holland, uh, Francois Holland, the uh, uh, idea of an international conference for one simple reason. What would an international conference uh, uh, come up with? International legality, United Nations resolutions, implementation of 242, 338, and many other resolutions, the right to the refugees in, one, in uh, 194, they will, cannot talk except about legalities. And legality and international legality is the biggest enemy for Israel objectives. Because legality means go back. But, but the thing is here, but let me you, the point. Do, do you make Netanyahu's refusal the end of the story? No. You don't, don't allow one side to dictate the end of the story. No, if no, the I international don't. community is on your side, the United Nations is on your side, and Egypt is on your side, yes. at least gain the momentum that's there. I agree. And, if there is, if and, there is and try, and try to apply smart strategies that don't make the situation worse. How? That's a, by being very careful about where you put your foot. No, if, no, no, if, somebody, about, if about somebody is putting a, a peace proposal on the table, you have to be engaged. You are dodging you, the main question. I'm not dodging any I'm questions. I'm asking you I'm not here to how, do we get, to answer questions. how do we get <laughs> to liberate our land? If I give you a series, and I came from, from 1993 also up to now, of total failures, one after the other, the, shall we continue? With the failures, or do you think we should seek another Did alternative? Did you have right. international support as it is today? Maybe this. Maybe what would the international support do? Really? It would not pressurize Israel to. If the United States, and again, I, I do disagree with you on. And it's not just the United, United States, States anymore. I have been there for 23 years. I've done a lot of research on. Would you believe it if the Israeli can guarantee you out of 100 senators, 80 are almost guaranteed? They're fed. These are facts of life. These are facts of life. facts of life. So I said... They're not new. This, nothing in what you said tonight is new. Everything has been there since 1948. Very good. Now, how do you deal with it? I have Either it. you keep losing... No, no. Or you is. create another strategy, a winning strategy. No, there is... A, a, Egypt has created a winning strategy and has showed results. No, yes. Syria could have done the same. Palestinians could have done the same. Don't miss the train again. Why? Don't keep missing the train. Really? Where, Every time. Where, did, where was this chance given to us and we missed it? Come on. In, in, uh, in here in Egypt. You where? were invited. You were invited. The Palestinians were invited here to Mina House. They didn't show have got with, a with a really? Palestinian flag that the Israelis objected to. In the same way you are saying today they, they, they objected to the Palestinian they flag. Objected. They didn't show up. They refused to get into the room. Imagine. And how the, how, 
And why did the pa But where were the Palestinians? I no. mean, the, thing, the fact is, you have missed the train many times. I can, we no, can no. spend another three no, hours cannot, going cannot, through sorry. that. But there was no you have, the, you have a process now. No, no, now give me one you have to chance. You why have did to the, if, the, if we missed the train in, in Mina House, why did the Egyptians lost in Mina House and they end up in Camp David? Because you're dealing but, with a greedy enemy. No, because we had a, there was a, a part of everything that was negotiated that had to deal with the Palestinians. It would have been much easier no, to no. negotiate without any reference to the Palestinians. Well, it does there can, was, does there was a framework for the Palestinians. The Palestinians chose later on to catch up and go to negotiate in Oslo on their own. So they, they, they lost if their you, if you, if you Peace is not an idea. Peace is, is something on the ground. But it's also an effort. It's also a belief. It's also an initiative. You have to campaign for peace. You think they have to fight for anybody peace. Anybody would have given the Israelis a chance like they did in Oslo what they have offered to forget about the 78%. You don't have to prove to me that you have Israeli who, Israelis who want annexation and not peace. You don't have to prove that to me. But I want the the question to is how can you create the dynamic to achieve your objective of a state. Uh, if you are a theorist, either, either, you create, either you create that dynamic. good in theories. Either you create that dynamic, or you absent yourself I am sorry. and let history judge you. History well, judge what? Gentlemen, judge, 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 unfortunately, judge. our time is up. I'd like to thank no, you both. Because we're talking about theories and theories, but no implementation. Well, yeah, we're, we're, we're not the reality. ones to implement. No, no we're talking about reality. That's you. Reality is on well, the ground. Either you change realities, you engage and change the reality on the ground, or you continue to, to stay in a beautiful isolation and well, talk about something no, that's no, not uh, Gentlemen, uh, I'd no, like no, to no. thank you both very no, much for your fruitful input, uh, input. I wish we had more time uh, because the discussion was getting livelier. Thank you very much uh, for your fruitful input. I'd like to thank you, the viewers. We'll see you same time next week. Until then, good night. Good.